It's a beautiful, gorgeous day in Denver, Colorado. One of those days that makes you happy to be a Colorado citizen. I uh, host this show to help people in business who are willing to push the envelope when it comes to marketing their business. This is not one of those meetings for you if you're somebody who still uses a keyboard with one finger. <laughs> in other technology news, Starbucks and Amazon have teamed up to allow you to order your coffee with Alexa. All you do is use the simple voice command, I am pathetic. 7-Eleven <laughs> announced, now our show sponsor will be happy that uh, this news is coming out. His competitor 7-Eleven just announced that they'll be offering breakfast pizza. Keeping with their motto that if you're here, you're probably hungover. <laughs> or drunk. NASA just reported that they've finally heard from a lost space probe after two years of silence. And not surprisingly, the lost probe sent back the, the transmission at 2 a.m. in the morning. You up? <laughs> uh, Melania Trump is reportedly suing a British newspaper for defamation of character. Uh, yeah, apparently the newspaper uh, reported that she was happily married. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Uh, speaking of the Trumps, the Donald has reversed his executive order and he's announced that he's allowing 872 refugees into the country this Friday. On Monday, they start their careers in modeling. <laughs> <laughs> Also, President Trump uh, has initiated an initiative to speed up the drug approval process with the FDA. He says that for what I've got planned, America is going to need all the drugs they can get. <laughs> Thanks for joining us here at the Denver YouTube Professionals. We're going to get started. We've gone to a new format, and I'd like to invite the other guest host and guest producer, the field reporter, onto the stage, SG Sharpknife. Give him a hand. Woo! SG. Hey, this S is amazing. I mean, <laughs> we're like a real talk show or something like that. Yeah, we we've got, really got it going now. We got a host, we got a desk, a microphone, and a chubby sidekick. You know, so. <laughs> Absolutely. So, we, every show needs one of those. If I could figure out how to do this. There well, we go. All right. Well, uh, I thought I'd bring you on, SG, to uh, talk about the show in its entirety a little bit, to help people get an idea what are we doing here and how can they be a part of it. What are we doing here? Does anybody know? <laughs> Anthony, yes, of course we know. Bit. We're helping businesses use video to communicate louder, to uh, share their message in a, a more effective way. Absolutely. I think. You know, especially for this show, all about how to be a spokesperson. Um, yeah. You guys are about to see this here pretty soon, but Anthony and I took to the streets of 16th Street Mall right before the Parade of Lights, looking for spokespeople. And we came across, I don't know, literally 30, 40 different spokespeople of all different types. Absolutely. We had people telling jokes, mm -hmm. people selling, giving away light bulbs. Mm -hmm. So. In every realm of life, there's a spokesperson for everything. So I think that's what this show is going to unleash a little bit about what it's like to be a spokesperson, how to get prepared to be a spokesperson. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're a business and you haven't heard that you need a video spokesperson for the product or the service you sell, we're putting you on notice. This is your, your indication that you now know that you need that. And... Um, you know, I think it's, it's just evident because of how easy now it is to use video and uh, how much more effective it is when, when people, you know, consuming information now in three minute video bites. They're not picking up the newspaper every day. They're not looking at magazines and they're tuning out of radio and television advertisements. 
Absolutely. Now, tell, tell us a little bit about your haircut today. Oh, my haircut. You, you like to know you, about my haircut. You, yeah, he was the official spokesperson for <laughs> Floyd's Barbershop. <laughs> and uh, yeah. tell us a little bit about that. Well, him. every... Great haircut, by the way. Thanks. Thanks very much. It's, uh, I'm working on the pomp here. I can tell you and I, I got, got the same Floyd's thing too. going to. Nice. Yeah, thanks. Right. So I was talking to my barber, and I do that before every show. She said uh, that... She, she was on board with me. She said, yeah, I could create a video, and then the college students around the barbershop would see it, and they'd you know, have a higher awareness. They'd know that we're over here cutting hair. You got your hair cut. <laughs> of course well, I did. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, you know, part of this too, SG, is that we should tell everybody some of the past jobs we've done. We should, yeah. The, the past uh, we, shows we've we done. Started. We started with one of these. Yeah, you remember yeah, this? Absolutely. Yeah, that was What's cool. this called? Dorky. <laughs> <laughs> Dorky. Good. <laughs> That's the Google Cardboard. That is the virtual reality kit that Google came out with, and it allows Red you Bull. to use your phone to uh, enter into virtual reality. What have we else have we done? We've done uh, paid advertising with Justin Sardi. Very good show, very good show. Share like a bear. That's where we initiated our street interviews. That's where that started. Have you ever, has anybody been to the Wrangler before? <laughs> It's okay to nod. Okay. <laughs> so it is a bear bar, and I fit in perfectly. You do. So we went there to promote Share Like a Bear at mm -hmm. the Wrangler, mm -hmm. and we asked these guys what they thought of the show. All we did was ask them, what do you think of Share Like a Bear? Now, the <laughs> answers we got were hilarious. First, we figured out what a bear was. Right. We figured out what a cub was. <laughs> And we figured out what an otter was. So we're not going to go into that. But it was a great way to introduce SG Sharp Knife mm -hmm. into the mix. Yeah, now how did SG Sharp Knife come about? Because uh, if people don't know, Sean is his real name. And he works for the government. And this is his uh, pseudo name. So uh, tell, tell us, how, how did SG come about? It was the pen name app. I don't even know what the app was. <laughs> but we were on the way to that sh street reporting episode. Yeah. And I said, I can't have my name out no. there, especially the Wrangler. <laughs> and so um, I'm in government. No offense. I mean, it's all good. Right. Uh, but uh, so I got the pen name app out. And I answered a few questions. Mm -hmm. And it came up with SG Sharp Knife. And, and ironically, I usually carry a knife with me as a tool mm -hmm. or a weapon in case you're being approached by a grizzly bear. Right. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so it was perfect. And it stuck. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, SG Sharp Knife. Sorry. And that's something that people might consider if they're going to be a spokesperson, isn't it? I would say so, yeah. Maybe. I mean, it fits for you. Think about all the different names that are out there, like yeah. Fabio. Is that his real name? <laughs> so, I, I don't mean, think so. Probably not. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, so that was the first one we did. The second one was for uh, Denver Startup Week, I think it was. That's right. And it was all about startups. And what was great, it was when, when the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the election was getting really heated. Mm -hmm. And the Gary Johnson movement, there was a bunch of people on that pedestrian bridge down there. Yeah. And we got to interview some of these people. Um, what a perfect startup to talk about, right? Yeah. And then we, uh, we asked people why they were staying in line for an hour for ice cream mm -hmm. uh, down there at the uh, Little Man. Apparently, it's very good. I did try it, but I wouldn't stand in line for an hour for it. <laughs> um, but that was a good one. And what a great show that was too. I really, yeah. really outlined a lot of the Denver startup businesses and how they got off the ground. I thought you did a great job kind of pulling all those people together to get some good collaborative ideas. Yeah, thanks. That was a good panel, wasn't it? I thought it was awesome. It was well, really good. Well, uh, you know, we do, yeah, that was a good panel. We found a good guest uh, off that panel. You know, what we're doing by going out into the field, SG, is demonstrating what other businesses can do. Absolutely. They can go out and they can ask questions and they can get unscripted responses to specifically how they affect their community. And the way I usually like to say it is we ask simple questions to get simple answers. And that's really what it's about, right? Mm -hmm. Let's not get too complicated. What were we talking about today? The broad approach and the deep Tell me how. Wide and deep. Wide yeah, and that's deep. a good concept that yeah. maybe we should talk about. If you're, nothing to do with if the you're saying, let's say, uh, <laughs> let's say, Sean, what are your three most favorite things you're wearing today? A plaid shirt and some brown boots. And one more thing? Underwear. 
Okay, so out of those three things, now we're demonstrating wide and deep. What's the most important thing? The underwear. Abs absolutely. <laughs> what is it about the underwear that's so important? <laughs> you see what I mean? We're going wide with three topics, and then we're picking one topic, and we're going deep. And it helps to communicate uh, the like most TV. important thing. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about my underwear. <laughs> TV. <laughs> This is good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> sure, your boss will be happy with that. <laughs> oh man, yeah. So anyway, that was that was. Pr oh, we got to talk about the haunted houses we went to. Though. Oh, that's right. So we for for uh, we did that one for Justin Sardi, paid advertising. Paid advertising, YouTube. and I don't really know what we were trying. I don't know. It didn't really. It, it worked. Yeah. But we went to <laughs> this haunted house where they had airsoft guns and you got yeah. strapped up with all these this different gear and you had airsoft guns and then you had these big scary dudes jumping out yeah. in front of you and you got to shoot them. Uh, it did, they didn't hurt or anything like that. But but what a cool concept uh, yeah. to do that. I mean, just really, really unique, I thought. Yeah, well, there's a, there's a theory in selling your products or services that when the geese fly, you shoot. Because in... You know, for that particular maze or uh, haunted house, there's only one time a year when they can make a transaction on that type of a service. And well, so a good approach for them would have been to, to boost their video and, and, you know, especially in the local geographic area where their haunted house was, to let everybody know that they existed. Hey, we're here. And they can get into hundreds of thousands of homes for you know, less than $200. And it was this business, which was an airsoft gym, I guess is what Yeah, it was call like, it. Uh, like, I yeah. think capture the flag yeah. with yeah. airsoft sort of thing. So you had this business that got creative and, and decided to capitalize on Halloween right. and make a haunted house out of it yeah. utilizing airsoft. And I just thought that was a great idea. Yeah. Um, so uh, that, that, was, that was a really fun show t that we did. And then we went over to the wizard's chest and tried on some <laughs> costumes. Yeah. Uh, got some, some pretty interesting a answers of whether Hillary or Trump would win. Um, mm -hmm. And then we got chased out. Um, <laughs> But uh, no, that was great. And then, and then yeah. leading up to, uh, I think the la the last one was the uh, the one downtown. Now, I just need to warn you. There's a joke. You're gonna see this a little bit later on. There's a joke on there. If you like Def Leppard. Um, Please don't get offended. It's a really <laughs> bad joke. Um, but uh, I did not ask him to do I asked him for his best joke first. Yeah. And that's what he came up with. In fact, I thought it was his worst. I'm, I'm kind of of that era. Uh -huh. I think that yeah. I just told you all how kind of old I am, too. So, yeah. but uh, yeah, anyway, so tell us a little bit of what are we, what are we going to be talking about today? We're going to be talking about how to be a spokesperson, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? How, to, how to be a spokesperson, how it's easier than ever, um, how companies use it in entrepreneurial land and how companies use it in corporate America. You've As got some great guests. Too. Yes. There's, there's some really guests good too, guests. If I might add. You've got lots so, of experience. Yes, yes. Did you know one of our guests was on The Price is Right? Are you you kidding me? No. With Come with, on uh, now. All right. Bob. Yeah. There oh, there she is. Okay. Very good. Well, yes. So this might be a great time to invite our next guest up onto the stage. What do you think? Let's talk about it. Line her up. Let's Mia Voss, the infallible Mia Voss, the world traveling lifetime video blogger who uh, uses her own creativity <laughs> to, to find companies that aren't putting out any content. She, she shoves it in their face and she says, I can make content for you. It's so easy. Why don't you just let me show you? Well, why don't we let her show us? All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Mia? Mia Voss. Come. I'm going to mic her up here. All right. Good. Right. Mia, thanks okay. for coming on the show. Uh, we met you uh, about four months ago oh. at the Denver Startup Week YouTube panel, and you had such a great, compelling story. We got together after the show and thought, there's really an opportunity here to talk more, and why don't we create a show about it? It's okay. about being a spokesperson. It's the thing that I've seen you do the best, it, and I've got a lot of great stuff from watching you. You've done it for about three years live in this format, so I know you're extremely experienced at it. 
tell us how you got started and how you got in your groove so that you know the audience can kind of follow where we sure uh, accidentally uh-huh that that's <laughs> can i just stop and say thanks for the boyfriend because the last time i was on the show <laughs> I met my, my boyfriend here, so. Yeah, you're welcome. So. I'm married. Are you, are you gonna invite me to? Uh, a bear. Well, you have to invite me to the wedding. <laughs> we are taking you out for drinks. Oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> we'll ta I'll take the drinks. <laughs> Honestly, accidentally, it mm -hmm. really started off with storytelling. is my favorite thing, and I was thinking about yeah. this when you guys were talking earlier. Um, we all are kind of spokespeople, no matter what we're doing. So mm -hmm. one of my taglines is "Be a cheerleader for the things you love," and that's kind of how I started doing that. Was doing uh, love. I love doing reviews. So you know we encourage people to do that. If you like a restaurant, if you like a certain place, yeah. you go and leave a review. Yes. You're already a spokesperson at that right. point too. You're just going to take it to the next level. And what and I love you. about that is that you, you're, when you give, you get. Yes. When you leave a video testimonial, you leave behind your face and your voice. You do. And maybe even your title uh -huh. to what it is you do. Right. So. It is a real giver's gain mentality and to mm -hmm. put it out there first. And it is. And it does, it's that no like trust factor mm -hmm. that they talk about too because then, you know, I, I know I'm very careful about who I represent, mm -hmm. who I am excited about mm -hmm. because people are saying, oh gosh, Mia said she liked that. Mm -hmm. and if you're doing it sort of randomly and not authentically, it goes back on one, you, you know, you're, you're not really telling the truth. And think about that when you think about the celebrities that are paid a ton of money and mm -hmm. you're really thinking, I know that guy's not driving that car. Yeah. Um, and people use me as an example with that because yeah, I'm only going to drive the car and I'm going to say exactly what I think about it mm -hmm. too. And mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, the authentic part of it too. Yeah, you've seen a lot of YouTubers get popular with reviewing cell phones. Uh huh. And I think it's so cheesy product placement though. Sometimes. Yeah. Because they're like this. And but <laughs> the good ones have good really ideas. excelled because yes. they've been critical. Yes. <laughs> Key. <laughs> Is that a toaster? Oh. <laughs> <What is that? laughs> We're live. Look at that. We're live right now. That's, a, that's us on Facebook. Right so Casey Neistat is another really famous YouTuber, yes. and he's m m created this legacy off of video blogging. And you know, a lot of the tools he used become characters in his videos. And recently, I saw a video of his where Canon came out with an updated version. Right. And he. He slammed it. He's like, threw it on the desk. He's like, man, I used it for a week and it's worse than the, the old version. I'm going back to the old version. So it, smart. It's, it's it truth. Is. And I just had that with a company or a hotel that we were in Phoenix and uh, we stayed there and I was like, this kind of, he had some issues. Yeah. And I emailed the woman. I haven't heard back to say, you know, because I always tell people, I will be honest. Like, mm -hmm. even if it's a comp thing, I'm going, to, I'm going to be honest in TripAdvisor and Yelp because people do trust it. Mm -hmm. It took me a while. For a while, I wasn't doing any bad reviews because I, mm. I felt mean. And I was like, no, it's, it's not true. It's not, yeah. it's not authentic. And so I'm waiting to hear back from them because I want to find out, okay, are you doing some kind of capital improvement? So I can include mm -hmm. that in there. So I soften it a little oh, bit. That's good. But it's really important, I think, to say, you know. Well, think of it from a business owner standpoint mm -hmm. if they hired you to create content mm -hmm. and it was good well then great well if it was bad then there's still a, a reason to pay you because mm -hmm. you've just discovered a weakness that they can then do something about and before they didn't know what they didn't know sure and it was hurting them and they didn't know it was hurting them I, I think I think the really important thing too is if you hire someone, you know, the great thing I would talk to people is like it, it's better to have somebody else talk about how much they like you rather than you talk about how much you like yourself. Mm -hmm. Really That's doesn't true. endear to others. But if you are going to do your own uh, your own spokesperson, it's about storytelling. Mm -hmm. And so you want to tell a story about either the business that the somebody that you helped, a customer that you helped. It that's the story as opposed mm -hmm. to like this because I said so. Well, of yeah. course you said so. You're going to get paid. It was so. a dark and stormy night. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, you brought up a good point, Mia, and <coughs> it's it's that you can you can take this this ability to be in front of the camera and you can use it for your advantage. Mm -hmm. And you can start maybe with just a review. Yeah. An online review. Yes. And transition that into a video. Mm -hmm. And then you can take it a step further and represent another product or a brand or a service. And there's right. just a few things we need in order to be good at doing that. Let, why don't we dig up what some of those things are sure. and, and talk about them. Uh, you know, how do we prepare? How do we behave? What kind of body language do we 
uh, use right. to communicate not just with our words, but with, with everything that a video can exp express. So I love using this example. Have you guys ever seen the signs for uh, like mountain lions? When it's, when the, and they'll say, don't look at them directly, but don't turn your back. Don't go too big. Don't go too small. It's <laughs> almost like that because you don't want to over prepare, mm -hmm. but you want to be prepared. So mm -hmm. I, I think the biggest thing is not overthinking it. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody tends to overthink it and try to cover everything. When I first started doing my YouTube shows, I finally was like, I'm just going to celebrate being a hot mess <laughs> and that things are breaking and that yeah. the cat's going to jump on the desk and the microphone's breaking. And mm -hmm. so when you instead of being really nervous about it mm -hmm. you just incorporate that into it and mm -hmm. that means taking the ego out of it that's probably yeah. the number one key yes is taking your ego out of it we're doing and something right Anthony. and humanizing it <laughs> because you're hot mess. <laughs> being being willing to embarrass <laughs> ourselves is that what you're talking about yeah, yeah. self-deprecation yeah i think being willing mm -hmm. to be embarrassed is probably the first thing that's going to allow you to it is to practice and that's really the first step you don't have to publish right away either nope you can practice you don't. another thing too is is literally just that is to practice i mean this this is a broadcasting tower let's mm -hmm. just face it that not this thing this thing right not your giant thing <laughs> that's what she said um, but you that's your broadcast tower and you literally can just set that mm -hmm. up and sit in front of it and talk to it mm -hmm. uh, one of my pet peeves is when people don't they don't know where their their camera is on their phone oh and so yeah like, oh, over here. Oh, yeah over yeah here. <laughs> right. I, I also yeah. agree with you it's just like yeah. Mark, Marty Feldman I'm like, yeah like no look over here well, so yeah you're not talking to me no who are you talking to right I'm not interested in watching. It, to me, the first sign of, of somebody that's not practiced is yeah. that. But uh, mm -hmm. that's one of the things I used to do on my show is I would do the show each week and then I would get a drink <laughs> and wa make myself watch mm -hmm. what it was. And I'd watch yes. the hand movements. I'd catch the ums, mm -hmm. the reallys. Actually, you know, those with qualifiers right. we add in there. Mm -hmm. And so you'll, you do need to spend that painful time mm -hmm. watching yourself. Love yeah, that. I say it takes about a year of doing it once a week to really get in your groove. What do you think? I, yeah, I think you can probably speed that up a little bit just depending on how much you want to let yourself off the hook and decide this is the direction I want to go in. Mm -hmm. And um, so again, it's like that don't, you know, don't over prepare, but, but prepare. Mm -hmm. You do want to watch other people. Find out a style that you really like. You mm -hmm. want to emulate. I, I love so Graham Norton. Or Graham Norton is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. He's a, a British talk so ho show host. He's very self-deprecating, but mm -hmm. he's got, has this great cadence in the way he speaks. Mm -hmm. So find somebody that you like their style, but don't yeah. copy them. Ooh, that's a jerk move. Right. <laughs> don't do that. We can, we can copy and <laughs> give credit, right? Yes, yes, and I was just saying that tonight on the way here, um, if you hear these great quotes, you say, I heard something, and then I... I'm, I'm, I'm looking at your microphone, sorry. What am I looking? What am I doing? Nothing, I'm sidetracking. Okay, yeah. <laughs> like, like this? Some scratchy it was pointed upside issues. down. Oh, okay. There God, go. speaking of... <laughs> <laughs> prepared. <laughs> right. Speaking of, ooh. we're a hot mess up here. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably my safari jacket. <laughs> it's going it's on. a nice camouflage. Thank you. Yes. I, can you see me? Yeah. I, I'm just trying to see me. Um, have gone in there? I can't remember what I was saying, but anyway. Well, I'll keep you on track. Yeah. Um, and I think the best thing to help Sorry. keep people on track is a storyboard, <laughs> isn't it? Yes. Well, and it is. How it do we script out our, our content? What What's the best way to go about that? It really is practice too, and it's super fun to just again set the camera up and just get in front of it and uh, just do. You know, you see people. I, when I, I lived in New York, and you could see people on the subway and the bus all the time, just sort of doing this thing and talking to themselves. Do that at home. It really is helpful. You can see what kind of lines mm -hmm. you want to have. So it, it it is a scripting whoop kind of thing. So well, I wanted to talk to you about this specifically, Mia. It's called the most profitable persona, hmm. or your best avatar. Okay. The person, and, and it has to do with the very beginning of the talk. When I was in telecom sales, I would do a lot of these phone calls. And, and I had about 15 seconds to communicate who I was and what I was doing on the phone. Okay. And I think the same is I'll true for pitch. video, don't you? Absolutely. You, I, I think when you need to choose the venue that you're most comfortable with, because if mm -hmm. you are in a setting where Context. it's super loud, right, or, or it's it's super loud and you have to make you project yourself, or you're in, you know, even even if you choose to do a speaking engagement, mm -hmm. you choose: Am I more comfortable at a podium? Am I more comfortable if I'm holding something and I'm nervous? Think about this too. Yeah. If you are somewhere where you can't set the paper down, and your hand shaking, that's going to blow. It's going to blow everything. Your confidence. Mm -hmm. What I was going to say too was the quoting. 
when you quote, uh, you need to make sure you say, oh, I read it somewhere. Because mm -hmm. if you act like that's your line mm -hmm. and you got it from somebody else, somebody's going to find out. Yeah. Like, right, you said By it. the way, my whole monologue comes from Conan O'Brien. It was good. <laughs> <laughs> so You're not supposed to be Andy Richter. <laughs> <laughs> I get that. I like that one. But it, I, you do need to choose the venue, and and especially the voice. So if you mm -hmm. um, if you're supposed to be funny and you're dry, mm -hmm. don't 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 stop it. Right. <laughs> don't right. do that. <laughs> yeah. So, or vice versa. If you need to be serious, and I used to have a show that was very serious, and it was no fun. Oh no. And I quit, and then I just wore this Good. little like virtual tiara, and my cat Bob yeah. was on the show, and yeah. and that was where my my sweet. They spot call was. it edutainment. It was my edutainment. Don't they? Mm -hmm. Right. Well, you know, I to bring it back to my original uh, point about yeah. starting off your video very succinctly. Mm -hmm. My job when I was in telecom was, you know, to, to do all this activity for myself so that eventually all that activity would boil down to some results. And I just got tired of beating my head against the concrete yeah. and not getting the type of results that I wanted sure. because the, it was so difficult to create all that activity. And so what I did was I started using these videos, like you did, uh -huh. to introduce yourself to hundreds, thousands of people, but it still boiled down to only a few results. Mm -hmm. Because you were clearly communicating to that most profitable persona, to that avatar, avatar that created instant trust. Because it looked a lot like you, and it acted a lot like you, mm -hmm. and it drank a lot of wine like, like you me. did. <laughs> <laughs> like, like me. <laughs> right. And so that's a large no, like <laughs> swath of the co community right. are people who drink wine. And so I think you're smart to say, hi, my hand's in the air. I drink wine, too. Let's right. be friends. It, it is a human element. Yeah. And if people know that's how, it was, especially if they meet you in person or they see you, they, for, for, the, for me, my style is that you know, they almost feel like they're watching behind the scenes. Yeah. So it's not the super polished thing. Yes, if I'm working with a client or doing, I used to host shows a lot for certain clients and you had to have a certain modicum, but then I had to choose, is that the kind of client I want to represent? Mm -hmm. I have to go with something a little bit irreverent. I, mm -hmm. I can't go super conservative. They're, mm -hmm. they're not buying it. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> So. Well, great. Um, that, that is good. Um, we've got another guest that we want to bring on to talk about this same subject. Yes. And we want to cover, you know, all the areas where being a spokesperson is a, important. The equipment that's now so accessible that we've talked about. Mm -hmm. And some of the case studies that mm -hmm. we've all used to create good results. And so our next guest is a former Miss United States. She's, uh, she's got a lot to tell us about her experience being a video spokesperson. And so I'm really in overjoyed to invite on to the show our next guest, former Miss United States, Shawnee Jebbia. I'm gonna mic you up here. Hi. Hi, hi. So your life is about the that. Same I mean it. I have two-year-old twins at home, so thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Thanks for coming on the show. You bet, you guys. Good to see you. Yeah. Your life isn't the same as it was back when you did all that stuff. It has modeling. changed so much, you guys. Um, for the better, it's different. I've traveled like Mia quite a bit, so uh, it's been a change, but kids are amazing. You guys know that, so I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I'm like I joke about it, but my eyes are finally uncrossing. They turn two in March, and uh, <laughs> but I'm 45, so I did this. You know, you're supposed to have kids when you're younger. There's mm -hmm. a reason for that. So, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm doing okay. Just glad to be here. So you're doing the mom thing. Do you find yourself s representing toys as you present <laughs> them to the two-year-old? Would you like to occupy yourself for at least another half an hour? Uh, that's really funny. You, you guys saw that the, my husband ordered the, uh, the Ninja Turtle for Christmas, so mm -hmm. I'm always... You know, it's different being a mature mother. Um, mm -hmm. Coming into it with experience, I, I'm very protective over them, mm -hmm. yet I want them to experience things that I've experienced when I can't really do that at the moment because traveling with multiples is, is a mm. hell. <laughs> <So> <laughs> You're outnumbered. I, <laughs> 
I did that to meet my grandmother. Um, mm. You know, so I'm just going with the flow and doing the best that I can. And, uh, you know, I'm just I'm so grateful my husband is here. I don't have family here, so uh, mm. that is a challenge. I realize it's a village, you guys. Mm -hmm. When you have a family, you need your village. I don't have a village. Mm -hmm. um, but I do have my in-laws, and they're fantastic. So uh, we're just getting by and having fun. They're talking to me now, which is so fun. My daughter, yellow, today. So <laughs> it was adorable. <laughs> well, you've got a much different uh, job mm -hmm. as a brand ambassador than maybe some of the other people in the audience who are entrepreneurs. You work for a very big company and um, actually saw the name of the company on the, the light rail service that we are riding in downtown Denver. Siemens is a really big uh, company that you work for, but you work for a different division and it has a very personal story to who you are and, and some of the challenges that you've come across in your life. And I'd love it if you told the audience how you came to be that video spokesperson. Okay. Well, I started in college. I, we do have such different backgrounds. It's mm -hmm. so fun to be here with you guys right now because you, you bring me out of my shell. Um, I, I kind of set myself aside for a while. Um, for the kids and Siemens has been something that, that came along with my heart to take care of me really in um, a time of adversity so it's, it's, it gets emotional to talk about but um, I started in communications in 94 I graduated telecommunications broadcasting I worked on ESPN for five years it was so much fun running around in uh, you know, athletic wear on the beach in Jamaica I don't know if you guys remember those exercise shows in the morning but I did that for five years on ESPN 2 and that aired worldwide so I was having so much fun right out of college working my craft um, it became apparent to me when I entered the Miss USA pageant I thought it would be a great venue in order to, to get into the business get on camera you win representation in Los Angeles by a really fantastic agent and uh, I said you know I'm gonna go for this I don't know if I'm that pageant perfect but I've got some poise I think I can pull it together and um, I won. <laughs> it was, I was kind of the wrench to the system, though. I showed up in a truck set. I played Division One volleyball in college, so I was not your typical pageant girl, even though I am sitting like this, and I'm going like this. <laughs> I should look at Mia and the way she's dressed today. I'm like, I felt like it was spring. <laughs> hi. Hi. There's the camera. Okay. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, you know, I was just wanting it to get to get connections into Los Angeles, which I did. So it was wonderful. Uh, Trump ended up buying the pageant right when I won, so I was his first winner, which was an interesting conversation there. But some other time, mm -hmm. um, but too soon. You know, I won. <laughs> yeah. No, really. I, let's talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know, I had a, I had a great time. I it was respected very much so. So on, on that note, I. At the end of my reign, I, I got a job with DirecTV. I was only home for four days to, to audition out of the year because I literally traveled so much. Uh, it was pretty fantastic to get a gig at the end of your reign because uh, I, none of the girls had had a job. They never got hired and, and was able to start their career at the end of their reign. So I was became aware that I was the first one to uh, leave with the job. So I was paying them and I told Trump, you're fired. <laughs> Good. Uh, <laughs> actually, my stepdad did, but that's another story. So, uh, so I went on to, uh, to work and I was so excited. You know, It was a, a new realm for me because my fitness show was more spontaneous. I was able to uh, just exercise, write our own shows, talk about different things and form when we're working out. So it was very much on the fly. The script wasn't written for me, but yet when I work for DirecTV, we're talking five different producers in the back cut if there's a the that's not right, that's on the teleprompter, so forth. So it was a whole different experience. It was very scripted, very structured, and I had to really learn then, I think, how to think about how I, you know, how I present myself and how I want to be in my personal life and because that could reflect on everything that I do everywhere that you walk in Los Angeles you know we, we were getting pictures I was with Miss Universe and Miss Teen USA I'm outside of restaurants so everything that I did I was just very conservative on how I you know uh, represented myself so maybe that's my family too I come from a conservative Italian family mm -hmm. and I just wanted to do the best that I could because I wasn't swimwear and being you know do I go on and be this Pamela Anderson in the business uh, that wasn't gonna work <laughs> so, 
<laughs> I realized, okay, I want to be, I want to go this route. So DirecTV was my mission, but mm -hmm. I did get offered by by uh, Hefner seventy grand to do Playboy. I would have been the first one to uh, to be in that magazine, and I turned it down. God, why did I do that again? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm yesterday. just kidding. My grandmother always <laughs> jokes about that, like that. seventy. But you know, I, I was on a mission, just like I'd like to tease uh, Anthony. He's like a Spartacus warrior going three hundred to <laughs> war for trying to get his message across and what he wants to do and he's very good at that and so is Mia. I'd like to call you Elsa from Frozen because you're like this awesome queen that is just, if you type faster than you talk, you're like my best friend and that <laughs> aspect. That's why she gets her message out. So Thank you guys you. are getting me back into being in the public eye a little bit and I just appreciate that, both of you. Um, so, story. you know, yeah. working for, getting back to the point as being a spokesperson, working for Siemens came along because I was struggling. I was in Los Angeles trying to uh, finish my career, I'm sorry, finish my gig with DirecTV, which your contracts come up, they're great, you make a bunch of money, and then all of a sudden, boom, you're done. Mm -hmm. What do you do? So you're auditioning, uh, I was doing commercials, booking a couple national commercials, the best that I could out there, but I started losing my hearing. I acquired Meniere's disease, which uh, was very significant hearing loss, but more clarity of speech is my issue. So it was just heart-wrenching. Here I'm 27, you know, and uh, just just getting started, I felt like. Uh, DirecTV was showcasing a network a month, uh, Fox Sports News, Lifetime, the Golf Channel, Disney, I was just having so much fun. And I couldn't understand my cameraman behind me, I couldn't understand my host talking to them. All of a sudden, I had this voice and I lost it. Mm. And uh, what happens with getting hearing impaired? You lose a sense, you get very depressed, you isolate yourself. I just overcompensated. I just, you know, would chime in and start talking when I, no one was listening. And they're going, you were not talking about that anymore, that's over. I'm like, oh, okay. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, did you want? I have no excuse. <laughs> that's my job on yeah. stage, yeah, actually. Just to yeah, but you know, you, you realize when you're just talking to yourself over here that that's, that. so I, you know, I had to figure out what I was going to do fast. And I went and got checked out by hearing, uh, hearing care, you know, specialist and figured out how years. So what I did is to be proactive like you guys do to sell yourself. I reached out to my company that I went to buy hearing aids from and I said, what are you guys doing? Do you need a spokesperson? Do you need a testimonial? Mm -hmm. I'll do anything for you. I won't eat. I'll, I'll pay for the hearing aids and I'll, I'll fly to you. What do you need? And they just kind of laughed a little bit and they said, why don't you just wear the hearing aids for a little bit and tell us how you feel six months later. So I stayed in touch with them. I just, you know, talked to them consistently, audiologists, to let them know what my heart and soul the things, the roller coaster that you go through, which this is one thing I think it's interesting with me too, and being a blogger that I, I am unfamiliar with, is that you voice everything that you're going through. And it's not always necessarily great things. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can be, oh, this was a tough trip, but you're trying to advertise your, your product. Okay. Um, but sometimes the journey to that product is not always the best journey. I mean, and that's okay to say. Right. So um, it, it, sometimes it makes it more bliss when you get to your vacation spot and you're going, oh, this was like the worst flight. Blah, blah, blah. But now that I'm here, it's the most fantastic experience mm -hmm. ever because the journey to get there to the top of the mountain was an amazing so that to me is I think what it, it took with me with Siemens is they gave me a chance and now they're called Savantos group they've been uh, Savantos mm. has been um, bought out I'm sorry Savantos bought Siemens and they are uh, basically are on a new journey and starting a new chapter and I have been with them for years but what they did is they said why don't you just wear them for a while and then fly over to Europe with us and we're just gonna do a little shooting mm -hmm. Because they're said, a German okay. team. Uh, Just a little shooting. A and I said, company. okay, what's a little shooting? You know, so I'm going, <laughs> so this is fun because I'm, you know, did Price is Right, I've done DirecTV, I've done ESPN, where we're out there sweating like crazy. I've been testimonials in the corner of a room where we're just doing everything, you know, and now I need to start doing selfies and some more videos and learning from these to a different trade and, and let go of necessarily being so structured as what I was in the past mm -hmm. and being who I really am and being okay mm -hmm. to share that. Yeah. But that's where Siemens kind of found that with me, and they said, you know what, why don't you just come over and just talk, and just talk. And I went, really? Uh, about what? <laughs> and they said, you know, just about how hard it's been for you. Yeah, ah, but what a, perfect, a what a perfect match, though, because you're the perfect spokesperson for it because you're using it. Mm -hmm. you're, you're able to express how it benefits you. Mm -hmm. And I, mean, I think and Siemens won. Point. Yeah, yeah. And the absolutely. Pain point you went through. I mean, yeah. yeah, and you know, being able to talk about this stuff, people don't want to talk about it. When you are hearing impaired, at least years ago, I mean, I've been hearing impaired 18 years. I've been wearing instruments for that long. Uh, you're, you're, at first, you just like don't want to talk about it. Now, I would have put a truck behind my head to hear <laughs> people because I just missed communicating and engaging with everyone. So for me, it was the opposite. I'll, uh, to challenge myself with technology, you guys 
you know, you're trying new pieces, you're doing new things, that's not working, throw that down. You know, but for me, it was just like this light bulb went off, this company was supporting me, uh, they just said, be yourself. And sometimes I just talked about those, those emotional things, intimacy when it's squeaking in people's ears when you're hugging him and, you know, all of these things that people don't want to talk mm -hmm. about when you start relationship. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did. I, you know, here, oh gosh, you guys will die. I actually, this last testimonial I did, I talked about um, that I hear the birds twerking. <laughs> Tweeting? Twerking. No, twerking. Twerking. <laughs> if you like, listen you closely, you can hear him. I'm so that. sorry, <laughs> Saban Tosa. <laughs> they put it on because they know it's just me, but I, I hear my, my dog. I, I hear pitches I've never heard before, and like the, the birds twerking. Like, my, what, where did that come from? I've Do heard birds Miley twerk? Siley, Cyrus twerking. <laughs> I don't know if birds so, can even twerk, yeah. but they tweet. I believe tweet, yeah, twerk, tweet. okay. Yeah. So anyways, they got the, the idea, but it was just so funny because I do, I just go on and talk See, about the thing. I would keep thing. that in. I would keep twerking in. Like, I no, I said twerking. I have a twerking bird in the backyard, so he's Well, Shanae, I think <laughs> you <laughs> and a lot of companies can find that in the middle of that depression, in that desperation, mm -hmm. can, can develop beauty mm -hmm. in, in the ability to represent things. And I think if you think about a lot of the people who have gone through depression, maybe who are overweight or who have uh, poor health, they've, they've been depressed and then they've found a nutrition company to represent and there's lots of these little nutritionists now popping up in neighborhoods all over the United States and they can easily use YouTube mm -hmm. to be found for the authority in their neck of the woods, in their corner of the world, they can create a video and they can upload it to YouTube and they can get found on the first page of Google for nutritionist near me, right. nutritionist in Lakewood, Colorado. That's great. And they can, they can use their own personal story in that video to create an emotional connection through body language and, and invite the person who's in the same depression to experience the same joy that, that, that they've discovered. And Absolutely. it's just natural. Absolutely. It is nice because I'm representing, uh, I'm working with some natural, uh, th uh, Mega Foods is one, and they had sent me a bunch of vitamins. And that specifically, they're like, what do you want? I'm like, women over 40. Mm -hmm. Let's just put it out there. And mm -hmm. I did a video with them, and I'm sort of showing my journey of like, mm -hmm. this is what I'm feeling, here's what I'm taking. And so I love it that brands are starting to work with authentic, people mm -hmm. yeah. instead of trying to present this, especially people over 40 or women yeah, over 40 absolutely. who are marginalized in the market. So yeah. it is nice to, that they're starting to look at that at the real story, the yeah. pain points, the, the, the things that get solved. I just see this entire demand for video spokespeople being so big and, and the supply of spokespeople being so small right now that yeah. The, the ability to speak well on camera is going to be a, a highly valued skill in businesses and you know, I just hope we can start this movement and get people to wake up to this idea that mm -hmm. we really need to do this now. Yeah. If we're not comfortable with it, well, we just got to get ready to em be embarrassed and, and start now. You know, and I, I just want to chime in there a little bit that the, what I've talked with me about this to both of you, that the a key thing about being a spokesperson is, is Knowing yourself too, you've mm -hmm. got to be comfortable with yourself. You know your product, that's a given. Me knows you've got to know your product and, and have the authority and uh, you know, to be able to represent that. Right. Like I was a personal trainer in the past on, on the you know, ESPN for five years when I, I did a video with Oscar De La Hoya, a boxing video, and so they, I was certified and I was working in, you know, as a personal trainer on television, but uh, so you, know, you, you need to have that sort of clout. But then you just need to be able to communicate and be okay with who you are, mm -hmm. and I think that's what's helpful me back a while because of the depression or worrying about what people think now that the hearing sure. and you know so Siemens kind of broke me out of that shell that you're okay just be you mm -hmm. and I'd show up to all sorts of events all over the world and they'd say don't script just go just go talk and I went really okay <laughs> all right and then I'd shoot a quarter of a million dollar commercial you know not talking but because I was just showing myself and what we do when we're hearing impaired at a table at dinner so listening to people and mm -hmm. you know so but being okay with who you are and mm -hmm. ups and downs and all of that and then just communicating that people can relate to adversity a lot more than people realize and I just had to take down the layers and say okay let you know let's just do it and uh, that's why I'm just glad to be here because I think that's what we need to do Good. in order to be authentic and the choice that we talked about when you and I were on the phone of, of 
you know, like choosing not to take the $70,000. <laughs> <and laughs> things and I was saying I, know, no, I had a situation okay. last year no. where I was really put in into quite a bind because a company had sort of bait and switched and said we're gonna put you in this hotel what well, was a brand I just absolutely could not get with at all mm -hmm. and it was such a it was a really tough choice because it, we're talking a couple grand and a lot of free stuff and I had to flip it and do the whole thing mm -hmm. and g they were not happy with me but I said you know I had to stick with what I knew for my for my choice was and that Absolutely. is pretty hard especially when you want to you know you want to work at the company but you that is being true to yourself absolutely it really is. absolutely good for you think about the long game too yeah and I'm really, really grateful better. for that in the long run <laughs> you know um, yeah so on that note yeah. <laughs> well good you guys I'm so glad we got a chance to talk about these things the equipment the case studies the accessibility to being a spokesperson. You know, and the Denver YouTube professionals, we're all about sharing, learning, and practicing. And uh, I hope we get a chance to do that soon here in the show. But uh, just to break it up a little bit, I think we'll break to the local scene with the only Asperger's uh, TV host in the nation, Scoop Nemeth. Take it away, Scoop. <laughs> it's the new you in the new year. And now that you know how to be a video spokesperson, thanks to our beautiful guest, Mia Voss and Shauna Jabia, it's time to decide what you're going to represent. Hello YouTubers, my name is Scoop Nemeth, host of the local scene here at the Denver YouTube Professionals. And this is where we go balls deep into the local Denver YouTube culture and see just exactly how people are using YouTube in their business. Here's field reporter SG Sharp Knife doing all the hard work for all you couch potatoes out there. With the holidays behind us, and as we get ready to skate into 2017, it's SG Sharp Knife here. I'm trying to skate. I really suck at this. Denver YouTube professionals thought it would be a great idea to take a look back a few weeks ago when street reporter S.G. Sharpknife and host Anthony Pritchard took to the streets of downtown Denver and the 16th Street Mall just before the renowned Parade of Lights. We're down here at downtown Denver, 16th Street Mall, getting ready for the Parade of Lights. I can hear it behind me, everyone's getting excited. I think the parade is just about to start. And we were on the lookout for a few good spokespeople. Have you ever been down to the Kris Kringle market? There's tons of spokespeople in there. Crindle, Crindle or Kringle? Okay, let's check this out. Look, look at this. Oh my gosh, they're getting so small. Don't lose them. Wow. You all see that, folks? Look at, oh my gosh, look at how, right there. We found some music spokespeople. We're promoting our next show for Denver YouTube Professionals. It's all about how to be a video spokesperson. So tell me a little bit about your band. What makes your band better than any other band out there? We go to where the people are, and we like to play what the people like to hear. So we really just like to connect with the people on the street level. We found some very amateur comedian spokespeople. Give me your best joke to start. Let's do that. Start? Okay, so let's see. Do you know what's got nine arms and sucks? Not a clue. Def Leppard. 
wow. We found some energy efficiency spokespeople. What are you doing with these light bulbs here tonight? We're trying to teach people about energy efficiency. Part of that is having people lower their energy use by swapping out their old incandescent bulbs for LEDs. These are dimmable, shatterproof LEDs, and we're giving them out to everybody for free that stops down to the parade today. And we also found some spokespeople on the topic of life itself. What are you, what are you doing here? What are you going to be videoing? I'm trying to video my life. Just because I'm here, for, I travel, I try to travel and do photography. So I'm just taking pictures every you go and seeing how my life goes. And hey, I'm in Denver for the first time. I know you have some ski goggles going on here. What's going on here? Just in case it gets too cold. The lines between shopping and online research are getting crossed. People are conditioned to expect immediate gratification right at their fingertips. They want to see, hear, and know what you do and how you do it. That's what the Denver YouTube Professionals is all about. Not just talking about video in business, but showing people and actually demonstrating the power of video on the internet. And I should probably mention that none of this would be possible without the resources of Denver Open Media. Right now, I am sitting in a public access television station that provides me with this camera, this green screen, and all the classes and training needed to learn how to use it. All this for less than the cost of taking an Uber to the airport once a month. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Learning how to be a video spokesman has helped my business immensely. In the beginning, I couldn't even talk to a camera. That lens would go on, I would freeze up. My mouth would freeze up. My brain would freeze up. I didn't even know what to say. But with the help of Anthony Pritchard, he's taught me the importance of what it means to use video to relay your message and to relay your story. And to tell you a little bit more about it, here's Deirdre. Everybody's on social media nowadays. Share one video, and I mean, it goes to all of the friends on your friends list, all of their friends. I mean, it turns out to be hundreds of people. That's so much exposure that you wouldn't get with just TV alone. Well, there it is, folks. Real businesses using real video to better communicate what they do and how they do it. This is the evidence that people are shopping for. Okay, so this is the first time we've done this format. This format right here. Yeah. Do you think this is something we should continue with? Oh, do you like it? Did, did you like what you saw? Okay, Anthony. And so Anthony and I went out to Wine Coop, and so I think this was a product of about four IPAs, <laughs> and then we came up with this format. That's right. And yeah, and, and you strap this thing on the back of your car, yeah. right? So and there's a like lot of work band. involved with this. This is going uh, down I-25. Yeah. <laughs> strapped to the back of my tailgate. It was awesome. So, all right, we're going to keep doing this format, I think. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to keep working on my one-liners and uh, <laughs> just look pretty and chubby up here. Great. So, so yeah. that's a great <laughs> intro to our next show, which will be on April 12th, right here in the same studio. Uh, MVP, Minimum Viable Product, if you're an entrepreneur or if you're a corporation. There's really, there's a, there's a basement to both categories of businesses. You really can't drop below a certain professional quality of production when you're a corporation. It's just not expected and you would ruin your brand if you if you produced a low quality of video. But as an entrepreneur, you can really start from the ground up. And there's many, many examples of people who have started sucky Maybe even like Justin Bieber, who's gone on to really make a lot of money <laughs> with this format. And so what we're doing is we're just following their example. We're, we're using this as a format to discuss minimum viable product for both the entrepreneur and the corporation. And we're going to have a little debate. See who can be the winner. And it's going to be kind of a myth buster -ish -y sure. sort of thing, yes. I think, is what we're talking about. So uh, yeah, the, the next... Uh, promo reel will be kind of 
the Mythbusters kind of thing. Uh, I think we're gonna have a good time with that. Yeah. It's gonna be fun. Did you guys do a shot? You just like alcohol. <laughs> no, do I? That's not good. Great. Great. Well, without any further ado, I'd love to introduce to you a brand new band on the scene here in Denver. A good friend of mine, way back from the Boulder Life Festival in Boulder, Colorado. Jason Kelly Music. All right. getting that buzz from oh it's gone now <laughs> I speak and the buzz goes away I like that that's power <laughs> uh, we're gonna do a sort of it's kind of a pretty new song actually and a uh, little tune adjustment here yeah I'll tune it 
you know, I got the bass crank down on this guy, so hopefully it's it's right now. All right. This song is about uh, also not looking back and, and, and looking forward. It's called Never Regress. It's still feedbacking. You hear it? Yeah, can we turn the bass down on it, on, on the guitar? Bass frequency. Stick together and we'll figure it out Brave the dark and we'll find a new way We can't lose with fearlessness So stay strong to the beat of your heart within Show some love and tenderness It's not enough to only wish for it Show some love and confidence Move Together and we'll tough it out Shed some light and we'll start a new day We can't win with resistance Find the heart within you and let it grow Show some love and tenderness It's not enough to only wish for it Show some love and confidence Move Never regress, move it on up and never regress. Letting go and push it forward is what we have to do. Releasing doubt, taking on stuff. To start this life with you Show some love and tenderness It's not enough, only wish for it Show some love and confidence Move it on up and never regress Move it on up and never Show some love and tenderness it's not enough to only wish for it Show some love and confidence Move it on up and never regress Move it on up and never regress Thank you. Thank you, guys. I like the message of that song. This last song is about, I guess, beauty through sadness, you might say. <laughs> but we spoke about depression, so. Get back up so I can fall Fall on down Suffocated from this loneliness I'm found Oh, I've been playing through tragedy All tied up and inside out Oh, I've been running from myself Trying to reclaim the truth 
before I die Of heartache I know It's hard to show What is this life for? I am bound to my innocence Finding strength in solitude Oh, and I have felt the sitter in my skin Trying to reclaim the truth Before I die I'm undone Can you hear the sound of my heartbeat Passion spills through these stained lips Oh, and it's hard to look them in the eye I'm trying to reclaim the truth Before I die everybody Jason um, thank you thank you I'm emotional uh, tell us about your uh, group beautiful. and your YouTube channel so yes. that we can follow you beautiful uh, it's just Jason Kelly music <laughs> Great. Facebook and on YouTube um, uh, this is Barb Siegel everyone she's hey, singing backups with me ran into each other at a couple shows and she offered to um, start working with me. I was with a band previously, Signs and Signals, and now I'm doing a solo acoustic thing and uh, really happy to be working with her. And uh, we got another show tonight actually in Morrison Holiday Bar for YouTube. Uh, they're recording a whole set of ours, like a whole hour. So 
Um, we've got lots of different music, and I, I think that's what I tried to portray tonight is a, a, a whole range of, of sounds in, in terms of what, what I've written over the years. So, yeah, yeah, and we're thank you so much for having us. You're very welcome. We're Beautiful. Also playing, we're also Beautiful. playing at Hermits. Don't Herman's forget that. Hideaway. Hermits Hideaway. Yeah, very close. This Thursday. Yeah. I pick up a ticket at the front door. Yeah, you yeah, can pick up a there. ticket. And how do they how do they see the live stream tonight? Do they go to your YouTube channel or um, how does that work tonight? The live stream I think is just on the. Denver YouTube Professionals channel. No, right? your show later tonight, though. Oh, later tonight. It's a pre-recorded thing, so it's going to oh, be recorded okay. tonight and then posted later. Uh, okay. Another music scene with Gene. Uh, he's the one who runs Morrison Holiday Bar. Okay. Oh, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Very good. Great music, Jason. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> man. Appreciate it. Having music on the show really. <laughs> This is levels are we are a real quality. nice <laughs> talk show now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah real. That we're real. Great. That yeah. was really inspiring. So we're no longer a meetup group. We're a television show, yeah. right? That's right. Yeah. 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 All right. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> All right. Great. Well, we've just got about 15 minutes left before our segment ends on Channel 57, and uh, unless you've got anything else you want to talk about, I've got one more thing. Tucked uh -oh. away. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, I know. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's the practice piece. I'm oh yeah, yeah. That's and it's I'm really the piece that you started with, Mia. What was that? Which is the testimonials. Oh. So I wondered if my uh, stage manager or my pseudo stage manager Charlie can help me pass these out. He's very handy. Yeah. <laughs> He's in debt to me, too. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll give everyone here um, some of these. Um, see, this is the formula that you can use to create a video testimonial. And the thing you can use to start your career as a video spokesperson, it's a three-step formula that I like to, can you zoom in on that, anyone? That I like to call the testimonial sandwich. And there's two pieces of wheat bread with meat in the middle. The first piece of bread is the who, what, and the where. And that's who you are, where you are, and what you just witnessed. And then there's the meat, which is your experience. It's your takeaway. It's your personal experience <laughs> with whatever it is you're talking about. And then finally, it's the call to action. What are you going to do next, or what do you think other people can do next? And I developed this because everyone uh, you know, has three responses to the question, would you give me a video testimonial? It's either yes, no, or maybe. Mm -hmm. And always followed by the same question, well, what do I say? Well, if you stab them with this card in that moment, <laughs> they'll have a great formula for giving a perfect one minute testimonial. So, if you had some pizza, leave a video testimonial for the pizza that you ate. If you thought that your experience here at Denver Open Media was a good one, leave a video testimonial for this building, this public access television station. If you thought our show was a good experience, certainly leave us a video testimonial and send it to me so that I can use it, if it's a good one. Uh, to uh, invite more people a bad one too. Yeah. to join us. In the video. <laughs> <laughs> we would like to fill up the audience to have even more people here. And so this is one of those things that can really do that. I say a video testimonial is the most valuable thing that you can have on your website if you sell something on your website. Because right before somebody buys something, they've got a decision to make about the risk that they're willing to make with the money that they're about to part with. Mm -hmm. And the best way to reduce that risk completely is for them to watch somebody who's already been before them, who's already walked in their shoes. And, and so we, we can't get out of here without practicing. Mm -hmm. We've actually got to put what we learned to good use. <laughs> and we've got, to, we've got to produce something out of this. Or else it's worthless. Or else what you <laughs> learned here, you're going to walk out that door and you're fit. Forget everything you just learned. The pizza was good. <laughs> no, right? Yeah. Is your Red Bull still working? Yeah, no, so I need to quit. This is the way we end out the show. <laughs> we usually just, um, sorry at home, uh, if you're watching this, you're going to see us uh, participating. And that's his encouragement for you to come down and join us.
So I hope you see you next time on April 12th at the Denver YouTube Professionals, right here on Facebook and YouTube. Yeah.